Welcome back everybody, thanks for tuning back in for another uh, RV14 build video. Uh, this first couple of clips, just gonna skip over pretty quickly. Uh, I can see just really having to prep for priming. Uh, this pre-coat uh, is mainly just an acid etcher. Have to kind of apply to all the pieces before we actually go into the priming. And uh, just the, the whole process is just kind of a time sink. Uh, but necessary, uh, arguably so. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and do it. So you're just kind of setting up for the wet works in the garage, building the nice plastic enclosure, and uh, getting everything laid out there. The, uh, again, I skip over a lot of this because I just, uh, I don't want to put the camera down in this plastic enclosure and risk getting primer all over it. So uh, you get to see <laughs> the, the build of the enclosure and kind of just what the general process looks like. Uh, so. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this at least as much as I did. It's probably my least favorite part of the build right now. Uh, and it, it just takes so long to get everything set up for what is actually only a few minutes worth of work. The uh, it's a two-part epoxy primer mix up here. It's uh, pretty noxious stuff. Uh, so making sure, be safe, get a filter. <laughs> I wonder if I'm not using the bunny suit uh, the next time I prime. It just feels like a little overkill, but I wasn't sure. So I just kind of went all out the first time I did the priming. Okay, cool. On to the, on to the fun stuff. So now, so the priming there was for uh, the horizontal stabilizer and the rudder. I kind of did, again, I talked about this in previous videos, both, both major components at the same time. Um, priming went pretty well. There were a couple of uh, bare spots out of go back and touch up a little bit so now now that everything's prepped we did lots of prep work uh, now we're doing priming or, or we did the priming and now it's time to actually start putting pieces together which is uh, I don't know very satisfying very very satisfying uh, so th when the rivets go in here theoretically like that's it pieces are stuck together now I booger up a few of these and have to drill them out and redo it but that's part of the process uh, and and kind of is a good part of the process that gives you the feeling like you don't you don't have to fear messing up right you can you can always pull that rivet out and redo it um, so uh, a lot of people that I've talked to about coming over and helping with the build they're, they're uh, very timid about it so just just know like hey it's the big deal like come over I'm not gonna put you in a situation where it's, you're gonna do something irreparable I mean I at this point in the build, I uh, on the videos like I haven't shown it yet, but just as far ahead as I am, I've already had to reorder parts. So yeah. uh, mistakes are recoverable. I guess is the main point. Um, uh, I'm I'm still enjoying the process very very much, and uh, the more I do it, I think the more that I like that I'm the one that is putting this whole plane together, right? I know where, you know, that everything is done to spec. I know if I mess up, like how to go back and fix it. Whereas I don't have to depend on someone else knowing those mistakes or, um, or you know, trying to cover up a mistake. So I, again, two and a half years away from having this plane finished and flying, but, but I think I'll have a lot more confidence in it when I get to that point, knowing you know, that I, I've literally touched every piece. So this part is the, uh, again, this is the vertical stabilizer that I'm working on right now. Um, the the skin is curved as opposed to being in multiple pieces. So like that that uh, that joint, that bend in the skin would be the forward facing bend. And uh, it's kind of a, a little bit more of a challenge to get in there and dimple out all of these holes. Uh, so the C-frame uh, tool that you see there, the, the black metal piece, that's, that's all I'm really going in there. It's just dimpling out all of the holes so that the rivets will sit flush and uh, just better airflow. I mean, probably looking at very minimal drag counts if you use standard rivets, but uh, it looks looks really neat when all the rivets are sitting nice and flush and uh, just kind of looking at other other RVs that have been built. Uh, they're really sleek looking without having all the, all the rivet bump, bumps on there. So back to the you know the main process, right? So we've done this at least twice before, putting everything together, 
Uh, it's again really, really rewarding this part in the process knowing that okay, I, I may have to put <laughs> 300 clicos in this thing to hold it all together but the end result is I'm actually putting in rivets where those clicos are and it's it's held together it's fastened, like this piece is so close to being finished um, it, it just feels really, really good Watch the uh, window here in the garage. This is my wife. I'm in the background working on. She's got her own studio on the other side. Here, I get her to come over and actually uh, drive some rivets on the airplane. Got to, you know, sign sign her work kind of thing. Um, had a couple of friends come over and do the same thing. Put a couple of rivets in. Uh, so if you're in the Tucson area, uh, give me a shout. Come over and put some rivets in the plane. Always have, happy to have uh, more people interested in doing it and uh, just get excited about the project with me. And I think that just about does it for us. So thanks for watching and uh, catch you next time.